just a great honor and a privilege to be back before you this evening. And we want to continue to talk about the fact that there are many people who are retiring nowadays and they may or may not be ready. And so there's some things that we know that you need to put in place uh, before you retire. And I want to say if you, you know, everybody's going to reach a time when they're going to have to retire, providing the Lord allow them to live long enough. And so we need to make sure that we start thinking about it early enough. Um, putting serious money aside anywhere between age, I would say, 30 and 35. Age 40 is a little late, but you can if you, if you, you know, put aside an uh, ample amount, uh, save as an investment. But you need to start. You need to start as early as you possibly can. I had the privilege of starting uh, when I was about 25. And uh, we didn't have much because we were living from paycheck to paycheck and we had things that, you know, we were just married for a few years. And, uh, you know, when you need car, you need tires on the car and you need uh, another car and, you know, you got to pay for washing machines and dryers and just all kind of things are happening that you didn't realize that was going to happen. You have insurance that you have to pay ever so often. And so, but we realized that we still had to put something away. So we started with about investing $25 a month. And as things got better, we increased that. And so God has helped us to be on track. So at age uh, 65, 67, you know, we will be in decent shape. So we want to share some share these, this with you so that you can be on the right track and enjoy your life after you uh, leave the job. So we've talked about that you might not be able to retire or not ready to retire if you're struggling to pay current bills. Uh, the second thing, if you have a large amount of debt, you probably want to continue to work. If you have no plans for future major expenses, you probably need to continue to work. And if you have an unknown, uh, if you don't know what kind of Social Security benefits you're going to get, you probably need to continue to work so you can uh, build up your Social Security. Um, and so we want to start today, this evening, talking about uh, you might not quite be ready to retire if you don't have monthly financial plans in place. So when we're talking about retiring now, we're saying that you need to have a monthly, you need to break it down to monthly. We also want to talk about, uh, hopefully we'll get to long-term financial plans. So let's look at, let's look at uh, monthly financial plans. Once you retire... You have to understand that your paychecks stop arriving. But guess what keeps coming? <laughs> the bills keep coming. The bills keep showing up. And so you have to realize that you don't have as much money now. So you have to, um, you have to map out your monthly cash flow before you retire. So before you retire, you got to see what do you have left after paying your bills. Be even before that, you need to decide... Um, well, you know, can can I can I pay my bills? You know, and you have to you have to average in. You know, when you come to utility bills, you have to understand, and uh, you should know this by now if you own a home or if you you rent or whatever. The summertime is is a time when your power bill are pretty much the most, and you got to pay a lot out. So you've got to a lot for that. And then uh, if you have gas, your gas bill. Uh, in the wintertime kind of goes up. So you have to allow for those uh, for those particular to bills, and you have to make sure you put that in your budget. You have to still, here's the thing, too, about retirement. When you're, when you're retired, you reach retirement age, and now you've retired, guess what you still have to do, be able to do? You still got to save. So you, gotta, you can't only just retire and say, look, I've got enough money to uh, pay bills and so on and so forth. You still have to have some overage because as we teach this, you're going to find out that things go up. You pay off bills, but also, you know, insurance go up, you know, things around you go up, inflation, groceries, whole nine yards. And we're experiencing that now. And so what we're saying is get a plan. Get a plan. Got to have a plan. Uh, one of the problems we have in planning is when bills come in quarterly semi-annually or annually. And so here's an example. Um, when uh, you have health care deductibles you have to pay and meet, uh, auto insurance, homeowner's insurance, premiums, and others. So 
this is what I did, and I didn't know anything about budgeting. I just started this when I was uh, first got married. I would see what my bills were, what I had to pay out, and then I'd make sure that if it came once a month that I would subtract that from my check. All right, so if my power bill was $50 a month, I knew $50 a month was coming out of my check. Uh, if my ties were $40 or $60, that, that's, that, that was coming out of the check. Now, what I had to realize is that there are some bills like health care or should I say auto insurance that you might pay every quarter, uh, once a quarter, or you have homeowner's insurance, you might pay twice a year. And this is where people get tripped up. You have to find out if you're paying, if your auto uh, is so much per quarter or per, or you have bills that's like every six months, you still have to say, look, what do I have to put aside every month to meet that obligation? Okay? Because if, 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 if my, for instance, if, if, if I pay quarterly on a car insurance, uh, that means, and my car insurance is $300 every quarter, that means I got to divide that by three. So every month, okay, a certain amount has to come out of my paycheck. So when it's time for me to pay that insurance on that quarter for quarterly, this quarterly due, then I'll have it. Uh, same way with uh, semi-annually. Um, if I know something is $600, I pay $600 every six months, then guess what I got to say? Every month I got to pull out $100 for that particular bill. Okay, and that's how you add up. Or if it's something that if it's $1,200 a year and I pay it one time, guess what I got to do? $100 per month. Okay, and a lot of people, they don't do that. They act like, well, I'll just pay that when it comes. Guess what's going to happen? When, look, it's it's always coming. So now you're trying to you're trying to scrape up. You're trying to oh this is due. Oh I got to meet my de deductible. Oh such and such and such. And you forgot because you 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 just came off a of vacation, right? Mm -hmm. And that's most of the time that's when it happens. You just came off vacation. You just came out off a of shopping spree or whatever, and you got this insurance annual premium due, and you're like oh. And so you know what we do? We go to our savings. We go to our savings or we go borrow. And so what we're doing is we're kind of, we, we kind of, um, we're putting ourselves in a bind. So any bill that comes, I don't care if it's delayed, if it's quarterly, semi-annually or annually, make sure you go ahead and decide how much you need to save per month. So when that comes about, boom, not a problem. You already have the money. Okay. And I, I hope that made sense, sense to you. Planning your monthly cash flow means considering when you will start drawing Social Security benefits and how much you'll receive, in addition to how much you'll withdraw from your personal retirement account and in what order. So you got to understand that you got Social Security coming in and then you have your personal retirement accounts and you're going to have that money coming in. Um, I don't have time to tell you, but if you have both a traditional IRA and a Roth IRA, for example, you have to think about the taxes and required minimum distributions on your traditional RA withdrawals and how that affects your Roth RA withdrawals, which won't be taxed and aren't subject to RMDs, and that means required minimum distribution. There is a difference between uh, traditional RA and a Roth RA. There's a difference. On your traditional RA, you're probably going to have some taxes. Uh, that's required, and you're going to have to be penalized if you take out too early on your uh, Roth RA. That money is in there. You can get it when you want to. If you're not penalized, so on and so forth. So you have to know how these things work. And, they, and these things are online. What I'm talking about now is online, the difference between the two. And, um, and I'm telling you this because I have experience uh, both, and you have to understand an investment, uh, money market. These things work, but you have to see what kind of finances you have, what's, what, what your situation is. Everybody's situation is different. And you have to pick, you know, a vehicle, a, a uh, investment vehicle that's going to best suit you for the money that you make, for your age, you know, for your, your you know, you got to factor in your health. You got to factor in a lot of things, your long go range and, and so on and so forth. Okay. So having a monthly plan also means having a solid understanding of your expenses. Having a solid understanding of your expenses. Some expenses may go down. All right? 
for instance, debt they, that may soon be paid off. If you pay in on a, let's say you've got a loan for your vehicle, or you have a loan for furniture, uh, or a boat, <laughs> motorcycle, you know, you know, uh, some tools that you bought, you're probably going to pay that off. Eventually, you will pay that off, and that's fine. So, so you have money, uh, that's extra money, but don't go and spend it. Save it, okay? Whereas others, such as health care costs and travel and recreation expenses may go up. And that's why you can't just spend the money that you just, you just paid them loans out with and you got free money. You don't have any free money. You better save because I'm telling you right now, the washer in the dry is on its way out. And so you have to make sure, you have to make sure that if, if the Lord blesses you to pay off uh, loans, then, you know, you take that money and you save it, okay? Knowing what your expenses will be means knowing how much income you will need coming into the house. So you got to have a certain amount of income coming into the house. Now, I want to say this. Everybody, by the time you reach a certain age, especially retirement age, there ought to be two, two or three other things that you know how to do that can bring in income. Nobody should retire and have to depend on Social Security and their retirement from their job and not know anything else to do. Now, here's the deal. You can't be a lazy person. Okay, you can't say, well, I'm retired and I'm done and I know how to do such and such and such and such, but I'm not doing it. Well, if you can do it, because first of all, after you retire, you need something that's constructive because God has prepared and made us to where he has built us as far as our mind and our spirit and our giftings that we're always giving out. We're always helping. We're always doing. That's how we're made. God created us that way. So you need to find something that you're good at that you can receive. You don't have to try to charge folk and, you know, beat them out of their money. And, but I'm just saying uh, something that you're good at that you can help somebody and make extra money in. Those are, the things, those are the things that you need to do. You need to always say if you don't need it. Well, if you don't need it, make the money and help somebody else that might need it. You know, buy somebody else something every now and then that, that they might need because they they ain't having hard times or they can't make ends meet this particular month or so on and so forth. And, I, you know, I thank God that he has blessed me to do a lot of things. And I know people, some people used to, they used to tease. They said, well, he's the, ma he's the jack of all trades, master of none. Well, I don't believe in that saying. I believe in that God will give you giftings and abilities and talents to do a lot of different things. And the more you do them, the better you'll get. And you'll save money for yourself, and you'll save money. You'll help other people save money. And there's nothing wrong with it. And so you gotta, you'd be surprised at things that you can do if you just took time. Because you're retired now, so you have time to be patient. You have time to sit and study, sit and learn, sit and, uh, you know, figure out and analyze. You know, there's a lot of things on the Internet. Man, you can go to YouTube and just about learn how to fix anything. You have people on there, they're just so excited that you're watching them. And they want you to subscribe. And they are just they are glad to tell you how to fix things. I remember one time our fan, ceiling fan, you know, is remote control. And it was going the wrong way in the summertime. So that means it wasn't working right. I mean, the heat was coming down rather than, you know, doing what it's supposed to do. And I looked at the other fan in the fan. I saw a fan in our great room was turning in the wrong direction. And I didn't know how to, to reverse it. The remote, it mean, none. So I went on YouTube. And all I had to do is simply flip a switch and hold something and boom, change directions. You know? And sometimes, and sometimes, you know, we've been a hurry. We want to do things right away. We want to get it fixed right away. But we, we should have lived long enough to understand that when you take your time, because when, when God gives us peace of mind and he gives us strength and he shows us a lot of things. So when you take your time and work through it, you learn, you save money, you get the knowledge, you help somebody else. Whatever you learn over here, you can take it and apply it over here. And, and next thing you know, man, you're doing things at retirement age that you just didn't think you'd be able to do or know that you have the ability and, and the wherewithal. And, but that's how God works. You, you keep, always keep an open mind. You know, always, you know, it's amazing how when we really need something or we figure that we can, and, and, and I'm, let me just say it like this. The scripture says, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me or who strengthens me. 
You got to take that principle and that word and apply to everything in your life. There, yeah, here's the deal. You can pick up the phone and you can call some people and ask questions, and that's fine. But you also have the Spirit of God. And that's one thing about being in the body of Christ. We have the Spirit of Christ on the inside of us. And the same Holy Ghost that reveal things to us and bring things back to our remembrance and help us to walk in the Spirit of God and help us to discern and all that. That's the, that's the same Spirit that will help us to find out how to fix things, to find out how to overcome, to uh, move through things, and so on and so forth. The same spirit. So don't leave the Holy Spirit say, I can do all things through Christ over here. And then when it comes to something that you need done, you, you, like, you, you, you lost. No, the same Holy Spirit is ready to help you. And he will help you in all things. But you got to engage. You got to connect with him. You got to say, all right, Holy Spirit, I need you to help me. And that, you know what that does? That helps us to understand that we need the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us every day, all day long in everything that we do. Everything. And, and you know, and, and because, you know, we're talking about investing in stuff. And see, and when you learn how to do things, the money that you save and the time that you spend investing in learning is priceless. It's priceless. And I'm going to tell you what, what, what helps me to, to continue to do what I do in learning and doing things. When I ask somebody to come do something and fix something for me, and I see that it took them five minutes and they charged me $65, I have a problem now. I got a big problem because I'm like, wait a minute. Wait just one minute. It took a five minutes and it cost me. So that means that tells me that you have to pay for what you don't know. So let's spend time. Let's spend some time learning and, and, and figuring out and, and spending time knowing things and understanding how things work. And you can save, you can save yourself a lot of money. All right. So once again, you know how much income you need each month. You can calculate. Uh, let me just go back. Knowing what your expenses will mean, knowing what your expenses will be means knowing how much income you will need coming into the house. Once you know how much income you need each month, you can calculate whether your nest egg is large enough to allow you to retire or whether you need to keep working and save. When you talk about long-term financial planning, you need to have that in place if you're going to retire. You don't. You might not be ready to retire. You should understand how long your, servant, your savings will last and what spending level you can maintain over the coming decades. So you got to learn how, even if you got savings and investments, you got to figure out how long is this going to last. No one knows exactly how long they will live, but expanding life spans and the increasingly high cost of long-term care may mean your portfolio will have to last longer and stretch further than you once thought. In all actuality, you need to plan for your retirement to last 30 years or more. So at age 65, you still need to be planning that your retirement will last 30 years past that. that, that that's, that's a point to shout on right there because you're looking to be way up in your 90s. And so, based on t statistics, um, for a couple retiring at age 65, there is a 50% probability that at least one will live at, uh, will, will, will be living at age 92. And a 25% probability that at least one will be alive at age 97. So here's the point. So, so, so here's the point. Finally, depending on your healthier portfolio composition, and your risk tolerance, you will need to come up with a plan for the percentage of your access you your spend each year, which might mean getting help from a professional financial planner. So you don't, don't wait till, you know, you get to retirement age and then you want a, a financial planner to come in and tell you what you need to do. You need to be doing that right now, age 35, no later than 40. And understand that... Um, you, you have to understand that you're probably going to live a while. And what you want to do is you want to live comfortably. You want to plan now. You want to plan now. Over in Matthew chapter 25, verse 14 through 30. Uh, we're not going to read this. I just want to kind of tell you about it. Everybody know this. This is the parable, Matthew 25, 14 through 30. It's, it's the parable uh, of, the, of where, you know, you have the talents. And the question is, what principle can we learn from this? based on what we're teaching now. And so 
the thing is that I get from these scriptures where uh, the man came in and he uh, gave five talents, two talent, one talent. He said, I'm coming back. And so the guys with the five invested, one with the two invested, one with the one put it in the ground. Okay. And so God wants us to plan for our future by investing now. You have to understand that. That type, that got to plan for your future. God has given us giftings. All right. And if he wants us to plan, if it's if it's if it's a good thing naturally to plan. Well, if it's if if we're planning to do what we need to do to go to heaven and we are vesting in spiritual things so that we can have rewards when we get to heaven. We also need to do that here on earth, because as we live, God wants us to make sure that we are we're taking care of ourselves. And so the way of the kingdom is to is to take the resources God has given us right now and invest them whereby they can yield a greater return in the future. So it's all about planning and investing, planning and investing. Why? So that you can get a return in the future. And so this means both in our spiritual and natural life, heavenly and earthly. We plan to store up treasures for heaven so we can benefit from them in eternity. Likewise, the way to practice for heaven is to walk it out in the natural. And so... We must make sure that we continue. Now, I know, you know, this might not be hoopla and exciting and, you know, people swinging from the rafters. And but you have to understand that that information and teachings like this and ministry like this will help revolutionize your life. Put you on the right point. Have you headed in the right direction, practicing the right things at this time of your life so that when you become retired at retirement age, you will be able to continue to enjoy your life. Thank you so much for listening. If you understand this information, please share it with others, and we'll see you next time. God bless you.